coax or optical for long runs. Matt in Olympia, Washington. It's the water. Was that hams? Oh. <laughs> From the land of sky blue water. Where was that? I think that was Paps Blue Ribbon or something. Anyway, anyway. Ah, oh, the old memories just come and go. Yes, they do. Um, Paul, I have a NAD M50.2 music server in my listening room, and I'd love to send music from it to my Focal headphone amp that is next to my easy chair, <clears throat> and it's on the opposite side of the house. My question is, is it best to run an optical cable that far, 30 to 40 feet, or is it best to run a coaxial cable? If I use some sort of wireless network streaming instead, could I get the same quality audio? Help! <laughs> All right, Matt out there in Washington. Well, 30 or 40 feet, let's, let's, just, let's, let's call it 40 feet so we can make our point. That's a long way for a digital output, and I would not recommend coax for sure. You'd want to go optical. Now, having said that, let's, let's define some terms and, and set some boundaries. First off, if you have optical, it's likely going to be what we call Toslink, which is, um, oh, the Toshiba, TOS stands for uh, Toshiba. So it's the Toshiba link. And Toshiba, you know, came out with this. It's, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. Your TV has it, and it's a little plastic thing. Now, you have to understand that Toslink, the plastic whether it's glass or plastic, but the, the Toslink itself is bandwidth limited. So you're not going to get much over 96 kilohertz going through there. And if you're playing CD quality music, then you're fine. And the answer is simple. Just go get a 40-foot Toslink cable and, and you're in. If you're trying to get 192.24, 176, 24, you know, whatever, over and above 96, then, then you're going to have trouble because Toslink is not going to be able to carry it. On our new Ted Smith Signature DAC, we're connecting the two boxes via optical cable. And there, we can do up to four times DSD. I mean, that, that you know, 352, not a problem. Why? Well, because we're not using Toslink. We're using an entirely different style of optical cable. So when we say optical, it's this big generic term. I mean, we know you're watching YouTube right now. Everything that you're watching on YouTube is going over fiber. I mean, fiber is what makes high-speed gigabit service throughout the world possible. The fastest connections are fiber, not Toslink. So Fiber is, is just great, but the consumer version ain't so great. And I am not a fan of it. I don't recommend it. But in your case, where you need to run 40 feet, yeah, and, and just kiss off anything over 96 kilohertz. And if you're okay with that, then there be your answer. And wasn't it a two-part question uh, out there in drinking Ham's beer? Uh, oh, streaming. Well, streaming's fine. I mean, you know, I stream high resolution 4K video at my house, which is nothing compared to the bandwidth of audio. So I think my first choice would be Toslink, unless you have the problem we spoke of where you're trying to do higher resolutions, and then, yeah, you might have to consider a streaming option. All right. Thanks for the question. I hope it helped you. And, uh, uh, you just stay away from that ham's beer. It's nasty stuff. Oof. Piss water, bubbly piss water. Ooh, and Paps Blue Ribbon. That's one of the great, here I go. That's one of the greatest marketing coups on the planet. Paps Blue Ribbon used to be just the, I mean, the cheap watery beer, right? I mean, Coors, for goodness sake, Coors was an upgrade to PBR. And once they started calling it PBC, there I go. Once they started calling it PBR, it became cool. Brilliant marketing. Whoever came up with that, heck of a job. 
Let's see, how do I turn this watery carbonated beverage into something cool? I know, I'll come up with an acronym for it. We're gonna call it PBR, and everybody will think it's cool. And everybody does, except me. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Bye.